special because all these guys, um, Isaac Newton and uh, all these scientists, they were all reading text from ancient Egypt. Yeah. And a lot of their hypotheses were formulated out of how they understood texts they read mm -hmm. from the ancient Egyptians, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So it is very important for us to also go that way, go into our our ancestors, how they understood natural things, mm -hmm. their concept of the of the world, right? How they understood it. By doing that, we'll be able to challenge some of the wrong knowledge in the world right now, mm -hmm. because even if you take the concept of modern economics alone we have better we used to have better modern better economic systems mm -hmm. way way there which took uh, care effective care of the vulnerable in society mm -hmm. but what research are we going to do to tell that story yeah that we had a better microeconomics system a macroeconomic system which would be more beneficial to humanity than what we are doing now. Yeah. yeah. You know, so to be able to tell our story we need to we need to really really go into that aspect also and add it to the historical information we know. You know because I know that our ancestors had the capability of traveling within the galaxies. Mm -hmm. We haven't explored the fact yet, but there are a lot of indicators pointing to that. Oh yeah, absolutely. How are they able to map the Orions? How are uh -huh. they able to do that mapping? Uh -huh. How are they able to align the Pyramid of Giza? Yeah. You know, how are they able to do all of that? Yeah, and how did how did the Dogon know that there was a... Uh, a star system out there yeah. uh, that you couldn't even see with the naked eye yeah, exactly. and that the, the Europeans only uh, after they built some strong telescope was able to verify that what the Dogon said was out there, yeah. that Sirius B, is it Sirius Z? Sirius B. Yeah, that it was out there. And it's out, you know what I mean? How, how could they have known? Yeah. So there is something missing. Yeah. And I think these people intentionally have hidden that information from us yeah. that, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's the only, I, 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 don't, I don't understand how we had the technology, the science, the know-how, the information that we did in ancient times, and now we're just, all of a sudden, just relying on these people to tell us what is and what isn't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 We are we we are suddenly shaping our view, worldview through their lenses. Yeah. Which is completely wrong. Yeah. And we are not even challenging anything. Yeah. You know, but right. we we everything we are doing, or let me say most of the things we are doing today, calling it advancement and technology, is actually distraction. Right. Absolutely. It, it, it has nothing to do with advancement, you know. So we need to come out and challenge this knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, this um, pseudo knowledge. Let me put it that way, because for me, any knowledge that is not in harmony with nature is pseudo. Right. It's, it's just trying to imitate nature. Yeah. Because these people, these beings, they think they are superior to nature. They think they, they literally think that they are demigods. Yeah, exactly. You understand? But un sadly, a lot of our people worship them as demigods on this planet. Yeah. They, a lot of our people believe whatever the white man says is the white man is more intelligent. The white man knows better. The white man, his way of doing is right. I've heard so many African people say that uh, the the white man. Uh, created everything and I'm like what you know like they got all the technology all in I'm like do you know that all of these things came out of the minds of black people yeah. and then they take it over for themselves yeah. you understand what I'm saying but our people don't even know that yeah. you understand so what was the purpose like you this is another thing you've never heard of African people going around destroying and burning libraries and books no. but white people have a history of doing that yeah they, and, and they, they did it in ancient times. Africans. Yes. 
they did it in ancient times in Egypt. They destroyed our libraries. Yeah. Why would they do that? It's something they don't want us to know. Yeah. yeah so it's we, we we need to really 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 tell you know telling our story. The historical aspect is one side, but also um, giving, uh, looking at the world through our own lenses, mm -hmm. looking at the environment through our own lenses is a greater part of telling your story. Right. Because two people will look at this tree, this tree will have specifically different meanings to them. Mm -hmm. Somebody will be thinking about furniture. Somebody yeah. will be thinking about something else. <laughs> right. Uh, somebody will be thinking about food. Somebody yeah. will be thinking about furniture. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody will be thinking about uh, a place to stay. Yes. You know, yeah. Some uh, shelters. Shelter. Like yeah. Yeah. You know, you know. So the way you view this tree through your understanding will inform how you are going to treat the tree. Yeah. Or it's something. Some people are looking at it like a certain bird comes and lives in this tree yeah. and that bird may lay certain eggs that we can use for yeah. something you know yeah. Yeah. so they will take care of that tree yeah for no other reason than this particular bird will be in that tree yeah you see what i'm saying exactly <laughs> yeah exactly. so so you see so anytime if you want to tell your story you need to also tell the world through your own lenses mm -hmm. and what the white people have done is to bastardize us anytime we are telling our story through our lenses. Mm -hmm. and, and that has been one of the more powerful weapons which have been deployed against us. So if you if you decide to preserve this tree way back then, mm -hmm. they would our ancestors would preserve a tree like that. They may call it a god. They may call it a god, they may call it a shrine, they may call it whatever they want to call it. Mm -hmm. The objective is to preserve the tree. Right, exactly. Yeah. But you come and say that what they are doing... Is worshipping the tree. Is worshipping the tree, <laughs> but you need that tree for furniture. Yeah. So you can cut that tree down. Mm -hmm. Is that advancement? No. You know. So until we, we are able to tell our story, to, to give our own um, account, of how we see the world, um, we some of our people will still be thinking that everything that comes out from the white man is right. Yeah, but it's not. Look, after telling us that preserving the tree is a form of idol worship, they now come and give us the message of environmental conservation. <laughs> Can you believe that? Right. <laughs> when that's that's exactly what we were doing. <laughs> you come and give us the message of environmental conservation, and you 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 now tell us to conserve you, instead of blaming yourself for mm -hmm. deceiving us right. to live our good ways. You now turn back to blame us for yeah. being distracted, <laughs> right? For following your own ways, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, so. And, and we are not able to tell this story as it is. Mm -hmm. We just accept the, the blame. Mm -hmm. You know. I believe if this place were to be some, um, you see this nine vegetation you see here, neem trees with with natural grass cover. This is a cemetery. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a cemetery. Yeah. And they have left this place the way it is because. They believe that the, the people there must have peace. Right. You know, you will go to a, 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 a modern, a so-called modern cemetery, there will be no trees there. Right. Right. <laughs> it's true. Uh -huh. Because they don't believe that the, those trees must be preserved. Uh -huh. So, um, I'm hoping gradually we'll get there with time. We will get there, but we, we have to do our part in having these conversations with the community, yeah. particularly with the youth. Yeah. Yeah. Because we can't afford to lose a whole nother generation of people to nonsense, to, to believe in nonsense and believing that the white man is more intelligent, the white man got all the answers, 
that he's going to solve our problem? How is the person that put you in this condition now you are waiting for them to solve your problem for you? Does it make sense? It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. This man has shown us for the past 500 years what his intentions are towards us. And, and yet, some people don't get it. We we had we got so many people that black people that were so emotionally invested in in the outcome of the United States election that I was I'm sitting here looking at people like wow because I'm like where have you all been for the past 400 years yeah. to, uh, uh, 200 years of this country yeah. where we we've seen what America you know how they care about us as a race of people what their intentions are towards us and yet you all are so emotionally invested yeah. in the outcome of this election yeah. as if under Joe Biden something is going to miraculously change this man has been in the Senate for 47 years he was vice president for two years what did he do in all of that half of a century to benefit black people nothing but now all of a sudden you 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 think oh Trump has to go this 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 other new white man or old because he is not new yeah. this different white man is not a, is going to come in and do something for us yeah. it's not true so me I just you know I keep my mouth closed because I sometimes I just feel like I'm I should be on another planet because I don't understand why am I why am I here I don't understand people yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. Like, what? It, why don't you all see what I see? I, I don't understand. And what I see is not something crazy. What I see is based on the historical record. Exactly. So I'm only going by the historical record. Exactly. I'm not looking somewhere. I'm not making some something up. Yeah. This is what it is. Yeah. But it's like nobody gets it, you know, aside from a few people. So I, for us, me, the only thing I can think that black people need to do is make their way back to Africa and let's work together to build Africa up exactly. and to free ourselves from the clutches of the French exactly. and and the, the other Western powers. That's it. That, that, that you just said it right on spot, on point. Because look, I I always give this analogy. People look at it differently, but we. Black people, we become whole together, uh -huh. you know, and we can only function in our wholeness. Yes. You know, at this time, I have you a black sister. Um, you speak a different language. I speak a different language. And look, it damages our wholeness, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. So now that you have come here, there is that even if we don't speak the same language, we have a connection now mm -hmm. and it's like we'll be patching up mm -hmm. we cannot function if we are we are scattered all over right being scattered is not necessarily only about the physical separation right the geographical separation it's about the connection we have with each, each other, other absolutely you know? yeah and without that connection without that um creating that fraternity of belongingness mm -hmm. It will be very, very, very difficult, if not impossible, <laughs> yeah. to get out of this um, quagmire. Quagmire. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. We need. We really, really need that connection. We really need that connection. Last time you posted a video um, where somebody visited and had a very bad experience. Uh, maybe people tried to cheat on him and, and stuff like that. I, I saw that video you posted. Who, and, me? Yeah. I posted it? Yeah. Oh, the, the, oh, a man. Yeah. I sent it to you. Yeah, I know yeah, what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was saying that, uh, you know, he's been over in a lot of places, but in Ghana, he felt there was a, a whole environment of people trying to dupe you or people trying yeah. to get that. That's the culture. Yeah. But I find it odd that I don't have that experience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And this guy, he's lived here, he's lived up, but I don't feel that way. And I find that the vast majority of people that I come into contact are very helpful. 
very hospitable and fair in their pricing. Do I run across some some somebody that may try to up the price because you know I'm a because in their mind I'm a foreigner and they automatically think I have some money or that I don't know? Yes, it happens, but that's not the that's not the common thing that happens. Mike, the most common experience is the opposite. You understand what I'm saying? So. I, I shared that video. Not I didn't post it on my Facebook page, yeah, but I, with me I sent it privately yeah. to a couple of people because I try not to spread, you know, that Most negativity. negativity yeah. yeah, but um, and and one thing a sister, a, a Ghanaian sister, said in in uh, response to that video was, people don't understand the culture of Africa. It's negotiation. Somebody tell you a price, you have the right to come back and say offer them a different price yeah. you don't have to accept that price yeah. you understand what I'm yeah. saying it's not duping it's negotiation yeah. and just about everything is negotiable exactly. and you have to know how to negotiate exactly. yeah for the price that you want yeah. so you, you always have an option it's not like yes. you are being forced to accept or to be a price taker yeah you know, so that you said it right. Our culture is negotiated. Even those of us living here, mm -hmm. we face the same thing. Yeah. Right now, I'm driving in this car. Uh, if if somebody sees that I'm driving in this car, he feels that probably I have better purchasing power. Yeah. <laughs> so he will try to extract more from me. Yeah. And this is um, I went to a seminar organized by the International Trade Center, and we discussed this issue. And they actually said that there is nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. There is nothing wrong with it for a seller to see people with higher purchasing power and try to extract more from them. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't see anything wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And this was Europeans teaching us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you, you understand? Yeah. This was Europeans teaching us. Mm -hmm. So with, with, with the blacks there, felt that it wasn't fair mm -hmm. so we brought our case mm -hmm. and they said it, there is nothing wrong with it mm. you know mm -hmm. so um, it's all about negotiation yeah and it's all about also knowing what you want mm -hmm. and knowing the value at which you, you want yeah. to pay for that yeah yeah so if I go I want to buy um, I want to buy something on the open market probably a uh, um, a bucket of tomato mm -hmm. they'll tell me oh it's 30 cities they now cut it into half mm -hmm. and say i'll offer 15. yeah uh -huh. you know and then you say oh can you make it 17 or 18. yeah i said no i'll give you 16. Mm -hmm. you know oh 16 i'll make a loss yeah. and you try to justify why is if i if i don't have 16 or i'm not ready to pay for 16 i go to the next seller yeah and sometimes I have had the experience where when you you hear the price quotation from the seller, you just decide to walk away. Mm -hmm. The seller will call you back yeah. and, and tell you, oh, please, I'm not fighting with you. Yeah. I, I, I'm just, you know, trying try to even... Um, um, try to let you know that you have to negotiate. Yeah, you know, this is so funny you brought that up. I was at Circle. I was at Circle. Yeah. And I was trying to catch a taxi to go to, to the ministries, to immigration. Yeah. And somebody had already told me that from that place, there, it should only be about three cities or so to yeah. take you straight up that way. Yeah. So, I'm, a taxi pulls up and he asked me where I'm going. And I said, I'm going to, to immigration, to ministries. And how much? He said, oh, 10 cities. I said, ah. And I just walked off. And he hollered, man out, man out, you're not supposed to walk away. You're supposed to tell me your price. <laughs> he said, I said, no. I said, you are trying to play me. I said, no, let me, I'm going to get somebody else. He said, ah, oh, you're supposed to tell me your price. You're not supposed to walk away. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that is it. So if you come to Ghana or anywhere in Africa and you feel that people are out pricing or overpricing it means that you are not a good negotiator right because they are always open for negotiation mm -hmm. right so so um i think um anybody who make that case 
is bringing the the mentality outside of Ghana into Ghana. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, because you go to a supermarket, a Texas or whatever supermarket, uh, Tesco, whatever supermarket you go to, their prices are written on, on it. it. You yeah. don't negotiate for it. Right, right. And that is it for, for them. Yeah. You go to an open market in Ghana, nobody has written price on anything. Right. And the person doesn't even know how to determine his price. Right. You know, you, you a typical farmer makes a harvest. The farmer is only interested in how much he's going to make to probably take care of himself or pay school fees or pay rent or something. The person doesn't know how to cost his production. Yeah, yeah. So they can't just make a price and put it there. Yeah. So they depend on open negotiation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they lose. Yeah. I can be honest with you that sometimes the price they accept, you do the calculation with them and you realize that it's a loss for them. Yeah. They don't even know it. Yeah. Because they don't do all those uh, profit and loss accounting yeah, yeah, and all yeah. of those things. They don't know it. So if you come to Ghana, any price you take on the open market, please do negotiation. Uh -huh. And it's better to also ask. Ask your friends or people who have been here before about um, average prices of certain things you want to buy. So that you go to the negotiation table with that in mind. Yeah. And probably a little bit more on top. Well, just I, I say you take some, so while you're first here and you're going out, you need to go with somebody who knows what things cost. Yeah. That can negotiate for you till you learn yeah. what it costs. You can yeah. see and then you learn how to do it. Yeah. Um, you know. When you go to the market for food, it's easier because you can tell the lady, give me three CDs worth of tomatoes. You don't have to go back and forth. Yeah. You can say, just give me three CDs worth of peppers. Exactly. Three, uh, you know what I mean? Exactly. You say how much you want, you want and they will yeah. they will give you that amount. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we've just gone past through the Insawa main town. And we are now going to hit the Accra Sawam Highway and we'll soon be at Old Bayer. And you know, we were talking before about to have a car or not, or to rely on public transportation. Now, uh, I'm, I'm going to get a car, but I can say that I found that the public transportation, getting around, is way cheaper than using, uh, your, than using your car. Because That's the true. fuel here is expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. yeah um, when I was doing a conversion, I came to, you know, I realized to, per gallon, because y'all sell it per liter here. But when you add it up and you convert it, it comes to about $3 a gallon. $3 a gallon is a lot in Africa. You know what I mean? Where I come from and uh, close to D.C. in uh, Alexandria, Virginia, where I was living before I came here, gas is only like two something. And, and I recently found some some gas in Tennessee uh, for uh, less than $2, like $1.70. And here in Africa, where you, the average Ghanaian doesn't make but about, well, I mean, the ones, I guess, who have cars, they, they do better. But when you consider the taxi drivers and the troto drivers who up and down, up and down, picking people up and taking them to different stations and then, you know, for what they charge, you can go from a good distance on a trotro for like two, three CDs. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's true. Yeah, and uh, that's less than half a, a dollar. Less than a dollar, yeah. yeah. Actually, <laughs> half a dollar. Probably yeah, less. yeah. So that, that is true. And I, I was telling you, it took me a long time before deciding to buy a car mm -hmm. because I, I, I felt the same way that you felt. Mm -hmm. I did all the calculations. And I re and even right now, from my house at Ashalebuche to the farm, mm -hmm. the round trip is about um, 
hundred kilometers. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it's costing me hundred Ghana cities in fuel. Yeah, and when I use public transport, it, it's costing me only about thirty Ghana cities. Yeah. Yeah. So seventy percent more money being spending on fuel alone. Just fuel, because yeah. don't don't talk about the maintenance of yeah. the car. Yeah, that's something else as yeah. well. Yeah. So usually on on if I want to go to the farm on rush hours, I just park the car mm -hmm. and take public transport because even staying in traffic also even double almost yeah. add some some yeah some more consumption to your fuel. Yeah. So it, it really did take me a long time. Mm -hmm. yes. First, I I got this car because of the farm when I got the land. Yeah. I, that, then I was, I was using a smaller car and I realized that it would be better to get a robust car which can make the trip yeah. anytime I want. Yeah. So I saw it as a security issue to my asset. Yeah. It's not just because I want to ride in this car. Yeah. I, I saw that it would be very better for me to be able to swiftly move to my assets yeah. and return right. anytime I want to. It's true. Yeah. And, and the convenience of having a car is undeniable. Yeah. Uh, but it does cost you a good penny to have one. Even where our land is, out there I told you past Hobo, yeah. it, that's why I have to get a car too. Yeah. To be able to go over there and come back, you know, yeah. uh, with less hassle. Because right now I have to take the Trotro from 